What's up everyone? Welcome to vlog 25 from this tiny tropical garden. This week was a fantastic opportunity for me to get all of my rooted cuttings into the ground. These cuttings were given to me by a friend at work and their tiny magenta flowers are fantastic for dotting between the succulents at the top of the stream. They react to sunlight and open during the day and close at night. You might remember a few weeks back I pinched out the tips of my Verbena bon ariensis. Well, I stuck those tips into soil to see if I could propagate new cuttings and they're already rooting out of the bottom. It's time to get these in the ground too. These Verbena bon ariensis are great for adding height and color and they're really loved by pollinators too and will attract loads of butterflies and bees to your garden. And I also pruned my variegated hebe to encourage bushier growth. Well, it's worked a treat on the parent plant, and the tips that I put into soil for propagation seem to have rooted. A quick inspection by tapping it out of the pot reveals a good root system on the new cuttings, so I'll get these into the raised bed too. The plan is to eventually have a good solid row of these hebes as an edging to the raised bed between the rocks. It's a great plant to use as edging because it's evergreen and flowers. And I just keep deadheading this osteosperman to encourage new flowers. It started flowering really early in the year and I want to keep it going for as long as possible. Because this vivid orange is great for a tiny tropical garden. I've also had a declutter and tidy up on the patio. I moved the jasmine over to where our downpipe is from the gutter so that I can tie it against it because it kept blowing over and it was stressing the plant out. Then I found three concrete planters that are very similar and I'm going to plant lavender up because we want this to be a Mediterranean part of our garden. Again, I just pinched out the tips of the lavender plant that we already had a few weeks back and put it into soil to propagate new plants and they all seem to have rooted. Gently knocking them out of the pot, you can see that most of the cuttings have a good root system. I'll split these between my new concrete planters and I should have three good clumps of lavender and planters in this sunny corner of our new Mediterranean patio. And my new grapevine will grow up and over these on the wall behind these pots. So this planting on one corner of our deck is really liked by people that visit our garden and by my wife and I wanted to replicate it on the other side, which was currently just a series of pots and odds and spare plants. So by rejigging some of the old railway sleepers that we were using with bed edging and using some offcuts from when we built our deck, I've created a new space for planting. Admittedly, the drainage isn't gonna be great because of the patio slabs that are really well secured down, but it's fine. I'll choose plants that will work. For the time being, I filled the area with multi-purpose compost and some of my leftover spent mushroom compost. And I'm going to plant it up with a canna musifolia, which I divided from the other plant I had in the garden, and some of the spare canna divisions I've got. And as the weather continues to warm up, nature just keeps moving into our garden. And unfortunately, I found this ladybird stranded in the water of our stream. So I used this old bamboo leaf to rescue it and tactfully placed it onto the Schefflera where you can see ants farming aphids as ladybirds eat aphids so this should really help. I am very fortunate to have been gifted these two fantastic plants by friends at work. The one on the left is a podophyllum and it's called Spotty Dotty and it's really great for shady areas of the garden and will eventually form a really well established clump. And the other plant on the right is a Farfugium, Oreo maculata. And I love this plant. It just looks like a galaxy or like someone spilt bleach over the leaves. I plan to plant this on the right hand side of my garden because you can see this is the first area of the garden that gets shade, whereas the left is still in the sun. But first, I need to make space, which means moving this Persicaria red dragon backwards to the back of the border so my new plants can be planted in front of them. Working in small spaces means you are constantly moving things around. So a few minutes later the persicaria is at the back of the border 
which is fine. This grows really tall and the dark leaves will add depth to what is a very narrow border, which means I could get my two new plants in. Now I'm going to be very careful with these because the slugs absolutely love them. But with a bit of love and care, these two new plants should form two very attractive clumps with really exotic looking foliage. But as we move into summer, the garden continues to look more lush, more tropical, and the exotic plants are coming into their own. And I'm sure, just like all of you, I keep looking at my garden thinking what more I can add and what I can change. But I need to learn to be patient because plants like this golden Indian bean tree are just emerging. And if I give them time to mature, I'll be rewarded for my patience. As always, don't forget to hit subscribe to keep up with this channel. And comment below if you've got any questions or tips for me or anyone else watching these videos. Thank you so much for watching. See you next week.